I once heard somebody say that street photography is like journalism for everyday life. And I think there's nowhere you should know better as a journalist than your hometown. But I don't think there's anywhere in the world harder to do street photography than your hometown. I've never even done it because I just haven't built up the courage. But today, I'm building up that courage. Today, that's what I'm gonna do. But first, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. If you're looking for a place to start a travel photography blog or portfolio, Squarespace is a really good spot to start. There's lots of really good blogging tools with a lot of cool features like geotagging, simultaneously posting to your social media, and really clever templates to make portfolios or galleries look really good, really easy. So whether you're looking to sell images or just have a really cool place to show them off, Squarespace is an awesome place to do that. So head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson and you'll get a little bit of a discount on your first purchase. It's 5 30 in the morning and I'm up. Obviously I wouldn't be able to film while I'm sleeping I, and I'm off to try to do some street photography but I'm a little bit nervous. I, street photography for me has always been something it's a little bit challenging because you kind of you've got to immerse yourself in the world around you and that's not always easy it's it's sometimes a little bit scary so i've started early this morning because lagos isn't exactly uh, a morning town it things kind of start a little bit late here it's a sleepy surf town and i think that easing my way into it will be a little bit better so i'm out with my 15 to 35 uh, millimeter lens nothing else and i'm just gonna go wander around I think one of the hardest things about street photography anywhere in the world is the intrusion factor. It's that you kind of need to, you know, get up in the grills of people. And when you're a visitor in a place, you have some form of detachment from it. And I remember when I was, you know, first really getting into photography and I went back to my hometown in Canada and I said to myself, I'm gonna go and photograph my home barber, I'm gonna go photograph my old school, I'm gonna go photograph this. And when I got home, I was just scared to take out my camera because people would recognize me. People would know it was me. And even though they probably wouldn't care, it was scary to put myself out there that way. And I really think that's the biggest deterrent to, to doing street photography in your hometown. I'm still being a bit of a chicken. I basically waited until tourists have come back into Lagos before I've done this and then I've kind of dressed like a tourist. <laughs> I think I might have underestimated how much of uh, Morningtown Lagos isn't. I have seen one single person and one single dog this morning and I've been out for about 30 minutes already. <laughs> so th this video is not going well at all <laughs> in terms of uh, photographing people's standpoint. But well, it's been nice to walk around. Uh, this is where I wanted to come. There's usually people here in the square. Uh, and right now you've got all these beautiful jacaranda trees with like the purple all over. Um, and I think there's probably a photo here if, if there was people here. Normally the hardest part of street photography is photographing the people in town because you're always a little bit worried that they're gonna be like mad at you for photographing them. But 
there just aren't any people this morning in Lagos. So that's what I'm struggling with. Still haven't seen another person. And in my street photography, it's not like I, I need to be in people's faces or I need crowds, but I like to have one single person or a couple people framed in my shots. So this isn't working yet. And uh, it's a shame because the light was really nice. So I'm gonna go to the coffee studio, which is right there. Obviously we're not open yet because that would be bad business if we were open and there's no people. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna turn on the espresso machine and make myself a coffee. Okay, so I, I gave up. I did something that I've been doing so much lately that it's driving me crazy. I gave up. It's, it's tomorrow, and yesterday I woke up with such an awesome energy. I just felt so excited to go out and take pictures. I had like a list of all these scenes that I've been seeing constantly in town and have been going, that's gonna make a good photo, that's gonna make a good photo, that's gonna make a good photo, and then I got to all those scenes yesterday, and there was nobody there. <laughs> and it was like, it was demoralizing. It was like, I planned this out in my head, and I would planned out all these shots and these scenes, and then it just, it didn't come through. And a lot of people watching this video will go, that's because street photography can't be planned. Street photography is going out into the streets hunting, maybe the wrong word, but hunting people <laughs> or hunting scenes or just exploring and trying to find cool things to photograph. And I was, I was going to traps. Why am I using hunting analogies? Anyway, I was going to traps that I'd set up around the city looking for prey. When you live somewhere, you see things constantly and as a photographer, you see them as photos and it's hard not to see them eventually as traps. But I was like demoralized when I got to all my traps that I'd set up throughout the city and there was nothing there. So I came, I came to the studio after and I worked and I was planning on going out and I just kept procrastinating and procrastinating and procrastinating. And that's another hard thing about street photography in your hometown is that there's so many distractions like if I was in uh, New York City and I was staying in a hotel, I'm taking some photos, I'm doing street photography, and it doesn't go well in the morning, I got nothing else I can do. I'm not going to a coffee shop working, I'm not going to the bank to do my banking, I'm not doing my accounting. I'm kind of like forced to go back and do it, I have less excuses. And yeah, that kind of happened. So finally, last night at like seven o'clock, I went, that's it, I'm going out again, I'm gonna try to take some pictures, but I didn't wanna film it. So I went out last night again with my 70 to 200 and tried to take photos, and to be honest, it didn't go well either. It's such a hard thing doing street photography in your hometown because so much of street photography is getting in with the people and kind of mixing it up a bit. It's getting, not in people's faces, but at least getting to a place where people are maybe a little bit uncomfortable with you photographing them. And if I'm in New York City and I photograph somebody and they get upset about it, I don't ever see them again. And yes, I think you should be respectful of the people you photograph, even when you're doing street photography. But it happens sometimes. Some people just don't like being photographed. But if I do that same thing here in Lagos, I live with these people. <laughs> I have, like, Lagos is 30,000 people. And the old town where we work and where I'm shooting, it's so much smaller than that even. It's like 6,000 people. When I walk down the street, I see a lot of different people I know and I've only been living here a year. A lot of the people that I wanted to photograph yesterday were people I see every single day. 
And they're not friends of mine. They're just characters on the streets here. And I can't have that same detachment and photographing them here as I would in New York City. So I found that very difficult. Uh, I did my lap or two with a 70 to 200 and I was like laying on the ground trying to get a photo in the square and of course a group of people I know walks by and they're like, Brendan, what are you doing laying on the ground? <laughs> it's just like, it's a different thing taking pictures in your hometown. It just is. Uh, and then after I did that lap, I took my 35 out. I went to a couple different scenes that I liked. And again, it just wasn't clicking and it was a little bit demoralizing. So <laughs> let me talk about the fact that I'm just gonna quit taking street photography photos in my hometown. I'm just gonna quit. I think at some point, once I'm more comfortable in town, I might do like a documentary photography um, where it's less kind of intense here but instead I just go around photographing things in my life here, like, like my friends and like my local pizza shop and just some of the characters that I do know on the streets and just doing like a series on that. But I think I'm done doing street photography in my hometown. I, I, I kind of quit. But I will go up to Lisbon probably and maybe even Porto and do some street photography in cities that I feel like are a little less familiar to me. Also, I have a photography workshop here in, in Portugal with Alan Wallace, which is an astrophotography trip. That's in July, I believe July. I can't remember the dates, but there's a link in the bio. So I have to do some scouting for locations pretty soon. So I think look for uh, an astrophotography video or two coming up pretty soon. And I guess I'll see you guys there. Peace.